So, back in January, I uploaded the first episode of what was going to be a regular series on the channel. It is now May, or possibly even June. I don't know when this will get uploaded. Whenever I finish. The things I originally wanted to talk about in this episode aren't really relevant anymore. For reference, those things are the Tide Pod meme, Ugandan Knuckles, the video games Doki Doki Literature Club, Sonic Forces, and of course, YouTube demonetizing smaller YouTube channels. None of those are relevant anymore. Some of them aren't even internet content, as I said, they're video games. But as you can guess from the title of this video, I was going to talk about Let's Plays. And even though the Let's Plays that originally got me thinking about this topic aren't really relevant anymore, I still want to talk about the genre. Why is it as big as it is? Why isn't it as popular now as it used to be? What makes a good game for Let's Playing? What makes a good Let's Player? All of this and more on this episode of The Subfeed. The beginning! Let's Plays have been a thing online for longer than since I've been watching videos online. Since I'm too lazy to do my own research, I'm not going to go into much detail on the genre during the early years of YouTube content. From what I've seen back in the day, people were mostly just uploading clips of them playing games for fun, and if they got views it was because people were looking up how to solve specific puzzles or beat specific difficult bosses. Let's Plays were more like video walkthroughs than pieces of entertainment. Things changed, obviously, and what we know as Let's Playing now was slowly born out of that. Most of the people who got views on their gaming channels were actually YouTubers who got famous for making what was considered actual content. The first Let's Players I personally watched were personalities like Igestine and Tobuscus, who had multiple channels for their creative work, vlogging, and gaming, and were able to dabble in all three without overloading the fans only there for one of those types of content. Let's Playing on its own wasn't considered content in itself, and it didn't make the numbers necessary to make sense by itself back then. I'm sure there were fans of the growing genre that would disagree, but that's definitely how I felt. Let's Plays were either informative in how to beat the game, funny in how bad they were, or they didn't get enough views that I ever heard of them. That is, though, until a little game called Minecraft wandered into existence and took the world by storm. The game, for anyone who has lived under a rock for the past decade and is, for some reason, watching the subfeed in order to educate themselves on what they missed, is one of survival and creativity. You load the game and are spawned into a randomly generated 8-bit 3D world and must gather enough resources from the land to survive the nightly advent of zombies, archer skeletons, and exploding green boys. As Minecraft itself was becoming one of the biggest games to ever exist, along with it rose creators like Captain Sparkles, Sky Does Minecraft, and some others also probably, I don't know. Minecraft was the perfect game for Let's Plays, because the game dropped you into a world and expected you to make it or break it yourself with no tutorial or guide. People were constantly scouring the internet for help learning how to craft the right tools and tips on how best to survive, not to mention looking for the weirdest things people found on the game's randomly generated worlds and the coolest creations that the game's most dedicated players were able to make. Each world was different, and each creator handled the different situations in different ways, leading to new surprises in every Let's Player's individual Minecraft adventures. These storylines went on for hundreds of episodes and never ceased to provide the creators with new and unique content. While a cynic might say that the Let's Players who became famous off this game happened to be fans of the right game at the right time, I don't think that that would be completely accurate. The algorithm was, at that time of Minecraft's debut, still favoring shorter, more edited content. Many of the Minecraft Let's Players that made it to the top did so with animated parody songs, something I actually talked about in last week's... <laughs> last week's... Uh, the previous episode of the subfeed, let's phrase it that way. <laughs> More than that though, Minecraft was a game that allowed the Let's Players an opportunity to juggle skill and knowledge of the game itself with an opportunity to express creativity that not all games offer. It allowed the change the genre needed to become a place where creative and well-made content was not only being created, but was getting successful. 
and that change was necessary for what was about to happen. Rise to the top! In March of 2012, YouTube fundamentally changed how its algorithms worked. Suddenly, the videos promoted by the site were no longer determined by how many people were clicking on a video, but rather how much time people were spending on each video. In the wake of this change, channels dedicated to sketch comedy and short-form content disappeared, and in their place, gaming rose to be the single biggest genre on YouTube. Don't check my numbers on that, because I don't know if it's true. But I, what I do know is that the algorithm changes ensured that channels like PewDiePie, Game Grumps, and Markiplier all rose to prominence. By August of 2013, PewDiePie had risen to become the number one most subscribed to channel on the site, a rank he has maintained even long after the Let's Play genre has slipped out of the popularity it held in this area. But I'm getting ahead of myself. We were talking about why the algorithm liked these guys. I think we were. That's what we're talking about now. It's easy to say that Felix rose to fame simply because of algorithm convenience, and because his loud reactions to scary horror video games excited the 12 year olds in the same way that Fred's high pitched shrieking had so entrenched the 12 year olds of half a decade prior. Hey, it's but it's wrong, I think, to discredit the work Felix did cultivating what was then known as the Bro Army. I don't know if it was called that, whatever. He created a space where people felt like they were hanging out with a friend, nay, a brother, not just watching strangers play games on the internet, which is actually what they were actually doing. Fans of online media have always claimed to like the medium because it allows for a closer and more direct relationship between the creator and the audience than traditional media does. As the website shifted its focus to creators that were retaining their audiences for longer, the new creators rising to prominence had to be engaging for longer periods of time. It's not coincidental either that Mark and Felix both started out playing horror games. In a similar way to how Minecraft Let's Players needed both a technical mastery of the game and a creativity in how they dealt with situations to make people stay, this generation of new Let's Players used horror to both be funny in their reactions, as well as to show a genuine side of how they responded under stress. They used horror as a catalyst to make both people laugh and make them feel like they belonged in this space. Hey, I'm Grump. I'm not so Grump. And we're the Game Grumps. The Game Grumps method, meanwhile, is a little different. Co-op commentary for Let's Playing is almost a different ball game altogether. The comedy comes less from reacting to the game as it is about reacting to the guy next to you. As long as the players are good enough at the game that they don't need to talk too much about what's going on on screen, it almost becomes a podcast that has a game going on in the background. The game provides constant fodder for jokes and the players provide constant criticisms of the game. And then the players bounce off of each other to th take the conversation in unique and funny directions. While the method differed, however, the result is the same. The players made to laugh and feel like they belong there, just hanging out with some genuinely cool guys playing some video games. And so the genre of Let's Play was the biggest thing on YouTube for a time, but like all fads, it eventually faded. The fall and the future. Times change. People change. Their tastes do too. Staying the same makes people bored and content boring. The same factors that led to the popularity of the Let's Play genre in the first place were still true when it began to fall out of popularity. If anything, it was better known at this point and people were starting to exploit the fact that watch time was valued over views. In particular, a reaction channel called Leafy is Here started uploading in the gaming category. After this, the YouTube landscape changed. Drama was more popular than content, and gaming, I would consider it somewhere in between those two, uh, sort of ranked below both in the popularity scale. It's not so much that Let's Plays stopped being a genre that people made videos in, just that its dominion over the site ceased. A lot of the Let's Players that had existed prior to then just changed the way they made content. Some became streamers, some just didn't play straight through games anymore, instead editing and commentating over their videos in post-production. PewDiePie, the big man himself, has all but abandoned gaming entirely. He makes whatever kind of content he wants to, and it works out for him just as well as playing games on the channel did. 
And therein lies the key, I think. The genre isn't dead, we're just entering into an era where the genre is more diverse. It's more important to make what makes you happy and what you want to make than it is to make specific kinds of videos about specific kinds of games. For me personally, maybe I'm just always behind the times, but I watch Let's Plays more now than I ever did. That's how I got onto the topic anyways. Let's Plays of bad games like Sonic Forces are still just as fun as ever because you still get to see how broken the game is and make fun of it along the way. Let's Plays of good games like Mario Odyssey can help show how great they are and how much fun they can be. I actually bought a hat in time specifically because of how great it looked in a Let's Play of it that I watched. And I watched through that whole thing, like the entire experience was spoiled for me and I still wanted to do it myself. That's how good a game it is, I think. I've been watching a lot of this channel that plays old Mario Party games. Each board takes about 3 or 4 episodes, so it's an ongoing story with all the thrills and strategy of some kind of competitive sport, with enough downtime to give commentators that time to talk about whatever they want, kind of podcast style over top of it. I really recommend it, though the, uh, the channel I typically choose has a lot of bad language and stuff, and I know that people that watch my channel might be concerned about it. I love my friends, and I love Mario Party! <laughs> So I've also linked a uh, series Peanut Butter Gamer did of some Mario Party boards as well. Speaking of which, uh, Peanut Butter Gamer's Minecraft Hardcore series is pretty great. Uh, if FOB Mario Party is like a soap opera mixed with a competitive sport, PGG's Minecraft Hardcore series is like Survivor mixed with Lost. Uh, but not in the same way this was, like, different from that. Like, also with Minecraft in it. Yeah. If anything, I think that the genre is in a great place right now, where you can take gameplay footage of any game and do anything with it. Make it multiplayer, whether that means competitive or co-op. Or you can do something single player, or just you playing with strangers online. Go through the story or don't. Make it a hundred episodes or edit it down. Stream it, cut it, paste it, whatever you want to do with it. Make the content you think will suit that game and pick whatever game you think will show off your specific skills at entertaining people and will help build the kind of audience you want to build. You may not get PewDiePie's numbers, but if that's your goal, you're doing it wrong. The methods that got PewDiePie to where he is are old anyways. The internet constantly changes. People don't watch Let's Plays because they start out with, How's it going bros? I'm Generic Let's Player 37 and welcome back to Amnesia. They'll watch you because of what you can bring to the overcrowded table that is unique to you. Oh and look, I got to the same points I was going to make in the original draft of this video in there anyways. Uh, I forgot to fit Tide Pods and Uganda Knuckles in, but I, I got to the stuff I wanted to say with the, uh, the small YouTubers stuff and, uh, and those same Let's Plays. So, uh, I'm gonna call that a win. Every creator or video I sampled from or talked about is linked in the description. In order of appearance, please check them out. Bye bye! I love <laughs> Mario Party! I love my friends, but most of all, what comes first is that I love God!